All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, J. William Bell Fusion Center here at the Sweeney Public Safety Headquarters for Newcastle County. Thank you for coming today. I am Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer. Uh, listen, more than ever, today we're all in this together, every single one of us across our community. All of us, each one individually, your families, we need to be vigilant. We need to wash our hands with soap, limit social interactions, reconsider any travel, in particular to any high-risk area, whether inside the country or outside the country, disinfect your work area wherever you're working, frequently throughout the work day, reconsider whether you even need to go into the office. If you're sick, please stay home and communicate with your health provider and the Division of Public Health. In the current environment, any personal irresponsibility in the current environment any personal irresponsibility is dangerous to your co-workers and to our community in light of yesterday's news that three more individuals four total have tested presumptively positive for COVID-19 right here in Newcastle County I along with our county leadership team have made a number of decisions to protect the nearly 600,000 residents we serve, and the 2,095 dedicated county employees. Our goal with these actions is to do our part to help reduce any potential spread of COVID-19 to those residents who live and work in our county and across the region. We want to educate our constituents and more importantly, help combat fear with facts. Effective on Monday morning, we will close all 10 of our Newcastle County libraries to the public. We are suspending all programming uh, at those libraries, obviously, and all activities at the Absalom Jones Community Center and the Hokesson and Garfield Police Athletic Leagues. We'll be coordinating with other agencies to help fill gaps for our seniors and our most vulnerable populations. That is all county activities at the Hokesson and Garfield PALS. There are some non county activities that are outside our discretion. All public facilities, all county facilities will be deep cleaned. Uh, we hope there will be no more than four presumptive positive cases in Newcastle County, but hope of course is not a strategy. If the number of positive cases increases dramatically, one of our greatest concerns is to keep our public safety services fully operational. Let me say that again. If the number of positive cases increases dramatically, one of our greatest concerns is to keep our public safety services fully operational. We are installing specific measures to keep our first responders healthy and safe. This includes issuing personal protection kits to each officer, starting with the patrol division in our police department. The kits include a disposable gown, protective shoe covers, hand sanitizer wipes, an N95 mask, a face shield, and splash guard. I'd open this up to show you, but these are in short supply and we don't obviously want to waste a single one. We're going to keep all workplaces sanitized and disinfected, and we've actually already purchased uh, just this week two Halo Fogger machines from the great Newcastle uh, company Halo that's providing those machines to hospitals uh, and, and first responders globally. All county sports leagues and recreational programs will be suspended until further notice, including um, all county programs at any, recreation, at any county recreational centers. All tours and programs at Rockwood Museum will be suspended until further notice. Many county, oh, all county programs at Carousel Park are suspended until further notice. It's important to note that county parks will remain open. There is evidence that shows exercising and, and um, working out does help increase your immu immunity. So we encourage people not to just uh, stay inside all the time, but if you have an opportunity to go out and exercise, you should do so and use our county parks. With regard specifically to our 2,095 fantastic county employees, uh, there will be more frequent cleaning of all work areas, uh, including after every shift, between shifts, in our 911 center right next door, in various public-facing areas of the public safety building 
in the Connor Building, at Government Center, in Gilliam Building, in the City County Building, uh, and at each of our libraries where librarians will continue to work. We also want to emphasize that we're requiring anyone that comes into one of our public facilities wash their hands or use sanitizer Im immediately upon entering the public facility. Four county employees, uh, if a health care provider or public health official tells an employee or a family member of an employee that they should be under quarantine uh, due to potential exposure to coronavirus, that employee should not report to work and is likely eligible for paid emergency leave. We're waiving all co-payments for diagnostic testing related to coronavirus, and insofar as tests are available, we're obviously encouraging people to contact their, their doctors to learn if they are eligible for these tests. Any employee of our county who, uh, who has traveled to a foreign country in the last 30 days is required to disclose that to our Human Resources Department so we can uh, take appropriate action. Before I close, I just want to say that everyone needs to do their part, uh, whether you work for the county or out in the general public. The future of, of uh, this crisis depends on all of us, the personal decisions we make to keep ourselves and our communities safe. Please take every precaution, every precaution to protect yourself, your family, and our community, and communicate with those around you. We encourage you to stay informed. There is a lot of false information circulating. Uh, our primary sources are coronavirus.gov and de.gov slash coronavirus. If you have questions regarding the symptoms or other health-specific questions, please call the Delaware Division of Public Health hotline at 866-408-1899. I also particularly want to thank, uh, in addition to all the members of my team, many of whom are here and the fantastic first responders, I want to thank Governor John Carney and his team, Secretary Kara Odom Walker of DHSS, and Dr. Kara Rattay for their leadership and for actively sharing information. They're doing an outstanding job. Uh, without further ado, I want to turn it over to our 911 operations chief and uh, the guy who oversees our operation, our office of emergency management, uh, Chief Jeff Miller. Thank you, County Executive. Um, so some precautions that we are taking within our 911 center is uh, we have stopped what we call a sit-along process where we let people come in and have a 911 experience, sit next to a dispatcher, sit next to a call operator. So we're not letting anyone from the public into the 911 center. Uh, in an effort to reduce any spread of any kind of disease or any kind of virus. Um, let's face it, it is flu season, and we just need to treat uh, this a, a little more vigilant um, than a regular flu season. Um, our coordinator, Dave Carpenter, for emergency management, he is on daily calls with DEMA, our Delaware Emergency Management Agency. Um, so. Up and down the state, the experience is going to be the same, whether you dial 911 in Newcastle, Kent, or Sussex County. Uh, we have changed our questioning. If someone calls presenting with difficulty breathing, a high fever, or just general illness, uh, we're going to ask a few additional questions about any recent travel or any potential exposure to the virus. And that way we can make our field responders aware before they arrive um, just to suit up and to be more precaution, better precautionary measures. Uh, but you're going to get the same level of treatment. Nothing's going to change in the way your 911 call is handled, in the time that your 911 call will be dispatched, or the way that your field responder, whether it be fire, EMS, or police, nothing's going to change in your interaction or your experience. And that's what we want everyone to know. And if you do call 911 and you think you've been exposed, please feel free to share that information with the public safety operator on the 911 phone call so that we can make those field responders aware so they can take those extra precautions. Uh, so that we ask the public to do that for us uh, as your field responders. And we'll all get through this. Um, again, it's, it's a flu season and let's just treat it like that. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. The Acting Chief of Paramedics, Mark Logeman.
Thank you, Executive Meyer. So uh, the main concern for emergency medical services in Newcastle County is that we continue to carry out our mission, and that's to respond to the 911 calls for the health needs of this county and its visitors. Um, we are in close coordination with the CDC, the Delaware Division of Public Health, uh, the Office of EMS, uh, receiving uh, excellent guidance on the proper way to respond to these incidents, uh, the proper way to protect our providers. Um, we have issued uh, specific personal protective equipment, or as you hear, called PPE, to all of our responders. And uh, they are instructed to don it when they have suspected uh, COVID-19 cases or confirmed COVID-19 cases. We're also uh, tracking internally all of those cases and all of those involved. Um, we have uh, internally developed contingency, contingency plans. One of the concerns is uh, if the virus affects the providers. And so we have uh, developed some detailed contingency plans and we're confident that uh, we could certainly work through uh, any concerns along those lines. And also in closing, uh, we've been working uh, very closely with the uh, fire service here in Newcastle County who provides uh, ambulance transport and uh, our number one goal is to respond to our calls for service and uh, I'm confident uh, that, our, that we're going to be able to continue our mission throughout this event. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Logeman. Uh, uh, Chief of Police Colonel Von Bon. Good afternoon, everyone, <clears throat> and thank you for coming. Uh, from the Division of Police, um, this has obviously been a significant concern for us as a police department, being as though we are constantly in contact with the public throughout our daily activities. Um, myself and my command staff and members from the police department have sat down and we've uh, formulated a comprehensive plan um, to ensure that the division of police services are not interrupted. Uh, our plans have included such things as reminding our officers of um, taking the necessary steps to cover themselves in terms of washing their hands, um, if they're in contact with the individual who is suspected of either exhibiting uh, COVID-19 uh, signs, um, flu-like symptoms, that they take the necessary actions to wash their hands, to decontaminate their vehicles. Um, during the course of our communications, um, we were able to come up with these packets here, the PPE packets, which we are uh, distributing to each officer on the police department with an understanding of when they should uh, utilize those uh, these particular pieces of equipment for their safety and the safety of those that we serve. Um, <clears throat> we are also looking at decontamination uh, methods that we can use in our processing area. Our processing area has a highly transient population. Many of these individuals are coming in and uh, oftentimes have different viruses and colds and things of that nature that we have to deal with. So we want to make sure that our employees are safe uh, that work in that environment, we have um, uh, asked that the deep cleaning uh, is increased throughout the week in that area. We've also asked um, and we've been able to purchase the halo machine that was discussed earlier, which we think is going to be a tremendous benefit to making sure that the surfaces um, are clean and sanitized. Uh, we also have made arrangements to purchase a number of um, disinfected um, chemicals that we will distribute to officers uh, so that these officers will have the ability to uh, clean out the compartment areas of their vehicles in the event they have to transport someone who is suffering from or appears to be suffering from flu or COVID-19, uh, I'm sorry, uh, virus. So uh, these are just the, some of the steps uh, we are expressing to our officers in roll call visits that this is not a time for panic. Um, we have been in situations similar to this. Obviously, none have been risen to the level of a pandemic, but we have uh, gone through the West Nile virus, SARS, um, and, and countless others. And so uh, our goal is to continue with police services, make sure that we're protecting the public, educating the public also on this, and also protecting our officers and educating them and giving them the uh, appropriate resources they need to carry out their functions. We also have contingency plans in place in the event that in officers, uh, we have a high number of officers that call out sick. 
Um, at the end of the day, a police department needs a patrol division and criminal investigations unit. Um, all of our commands have been made aware that if the need arises, we will shut down different units of the police department to put them in a patrol function so that the calls for 911 can be answered and, the and our service can be delivered in a manner that is uh, um, necessary for 911 calls. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to each of you. Are there any questions for myself or anyone, or for that matter, anyone on my staff? Yeah, Amy. Uh, Marcus, the question was, Marcus, the, the question was, can wedding still go on at Rockwood? That's with the private vendor up there, but the parent shop didn't control that. So, yeah, things, things operated by private vendor within Rockwood, there, there's a contract there, and so if the contract permits it, it's up to the discretion of the private vendor. Yeah. Mark, come on up to the yes. Thanks, right. Chief Logan. Come on. Yes. Thanks. So what we what we've looked at and our and our planning for is um, potentially if the need comes to altering uh, the work schedule, to uh, some work schedules are more favorable to a smaller group of employees. So uh, it would be altering the work schedule, and then uh, if we really came down to it, and it would have to be where our workforce is pretty heavily depleted. Um, changing the configuration of how we respond rather than potentially rather than having two paramedics show up on an incident maybe one paramedic shows up on an incident and has have another one coming from more of a distance but ensuring that that advanced life support care is, is getting to the residents or public uh, public place regardless of, uh, of what, what we're dealing with I, I also want to add to that that uh, there is a problem you're seeing really around the world that in many workplaces, if you infect one or two, you infect all or nearly all of the individuals in that workspace. Uh, we have began a review of every office of county government, both for the individuals up here, uh, those working out on sewers and parks and libraries, uh, all sorts of community services, affordable housing, land use, to figure out uh, how we divide our workplaces into teams. So if, for example, uh, you work on Team A, you will not have any contact whatsoever in work or hopefully outside of work insofar as we can govern that with anyone from Team B, Team C, Team D. So if there is, in the unfortunate circumstance, someone from, um, you know, in our 911 hall here from Team A who does test positive, it hopefully, in the worst case, would only infect those individuals from Team A. So Team B, Team C, Team D, and the others can continue to operate normally. I should add, with respect to paramedics and to some extent police, paramedics, there are 10 stations across the county, and they do not or ordinarily work with each other on a daily basis, so there's a natural sort of team set up there. Do you guys have any, uh, well, this is a human question. Mm -hmm. Human questions are allowed. I do not have any specific projections. What we're doing in county government is we are working to achieve the best result, but we're planning for the worst case. So we will be fully prepared in that worst case. But I don't have any specific projections now. Okay, thank you. We're, thanks for coming. Thanks for the important public service you provide. We're around and available for anyone that wants to talk further.